All right, what's up, YouTube? You know, like, when I do these videos for y'all, man, I gotta be in my car. I gotta be in the streets. I gotta be able to fucking smell this shit. I gotta be able to fucking taste this shit. I gotta see it. You know? I gotta breathe this shit to tell you these stories, man. Okay? So... My homie, Sean Charles O'Brien, part four. This is where it gets fucking weird, you guys. And all this shit's documented. I'm from Minneapolis. Everybody knows me. If I lie, just call me a lying ass nigga, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll get called out, you guys. These are serious stories with real people in them. And I can't fuck up a detail, okay? So that's my main focus and why people think I'm such a good storyteller, you guys. Because I stick to every fucking detail. I cannot deviate from the truth. I'm not gonna fucking embellish shit for you, motherfucker. Fuck you. You're gonna get the story just how it happened, motherfucker. And you're gonna take it like that. All right? So, like I said, you gotta, you gotta hear the streets. You gotta feel it. You gotta smell that shit. You gotta taste that shit. You know? For real, you guys. So that's why I'm such a good storyteller because I'm coming to you right from where these stories fucking originate from all right so this is real content this is real street shit okay so it's 2005 my homie k wood my homie k wood had just been murdered on August 9th, 2005, all right? I'm not a date person, you guys. Like, I don't remember, like, the days I went to prison. And, like, you know, I, don't, I have to look back, you guys. I'll try to block a lot of this shit out, right? So my man K. Wood just got murdered. And I haven't finished his story yet because it intertwines with this one. And it spins off to another one. But now his story is going to get finished after this one, okay? So... I'm sitting in my Cadillac lowrider, right? And I'm fidgeting it around, cleaning shit out, keeping my shit spotless, right? Now, some months earlier, me and my guy were smoking some sticks, right? We were smoking some dust on like 42nd and Nicollet on the south side. There used to be a little bar, a little bar called Westrooms, right? So me and my boy were sitting there and we were smoking sticks, right? And we was fucked up, right? So once we really got zapped and shit, right? Once we were really feeling that shit, we were sitting in the lap. And then I had like four tens in the trunk, just wanging, right? Just slapping, man. Just pimp slapping, man. So, bro, we're just on, we're just fucking high on PCP, right? And we're just listening to music, just feeling it. And the police pull up somewhere on the block, right? Like halfway down the block, waiting for us to leave, right? This nigga's got like seven, eight sticks on him. And he's just fucked up, but I'm still with it. I don't I don't go all the way, all the way to outer space, right? So he's gone. He don't even know the play. I'm still with it. I'm like, get all that shit, man. Like, I think he was in the ashtray. So he grabs him all out the ashtray. As fucked up as we were, we knew one got lost in that ashtray, right? So I'm like, get all that shit, man. So we, he gets it all about the car. We go back into Westrooms. We sit down at the booth, stuff the dust into the crack of the seat, right? But the whole time, I know this fool lost this shit in my car, right? I never find it. We never find the shit. I'm sure he probably smoked all that shit up or whatever. I wasn't a real big, I wasn't a real big, uh, dust head man like i was kind of like that was like special occasion type shit right so so i find the fucking so i'm cleaning my car about five months later four months later i don't know how many months fuck it could have been two weeks i don't fucking know it's no it's, you guys you know how i know because i was so it was dry as fuck right it had been some months right so I really didn't even know if it was going to get me high. So it falls out from behind the ashtray. 
you know, you know who's ever been in the Fleetwood Brome, but I grew up in these things, you guys. So there's an ashtray, it falls, but there's like this space behind it where shit can fall. It falls out. And now I had no plans of smoking this shit. And now it's falling into my lap. So I'm like, and you never smoke PCP by yourself. That is not what you do. Okay? So, but I'm by myself. And I'm, I'm like kind of feeling like kind of funny about what happened to my man K-Wood. And I like the stick. This is my CBD, right? It's for my homie Sean. As y'all see him with the blunt in his mouth. Like, that's how I always remember him. Like, that's, he just love your boy because all I did was smoke weed and shit like that. And I used to trip on ass and do other shit like that, but... I just never would go too far out. They were on some other shit when it came to drug use that I really wasn't familiar with, which I got familiar with. And I didn't fucking not, it wasn't something that was cool, right? So, but at this time I'm young, so I don't really have, I don't have all these developed habits, right? So I'm just about my dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, just about my dope. I'm not taking no shit, right? So, um, I would always be like, bro, like, Man, bro, what, what, like, man, you know what? Uh, what I got, you got. Like, what can I? What do you want? He's like, man, it's crazy. I already have my day, man. I already have my money and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just kind of acted like, I don't know, man. I did did anything for him, and he never utilized me like that. You know what I'm saying? And he's like the big homie. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like. I'm like, okay. And, uh, so I smoked the PCP, right? <clears throat> I smoked the PCP and I don't smoke it all. I smoke maybe a third of it, right? And put it out, not knowing what it's going to do. Boom, it hits me. I'm fucked up, right? Sitting in my lap and I'm just banging some shit. I don't know what it was, man, but I had some real nice music in there. Banging some shit. And uh I was just starting to elevate to that 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 level of intelligence, that spiritual connection. You know, I don't know why Dusty brings you there, but I have a clue and I'll explain that real quick because the shit story gets fucking weird, you guys. Fucking weird multiple times. So I'm all fucked up on dust, right? Start I'm just sitting in the lag, listening to some music, thinking about the homie who just lost his life. At some point, I start thinking about the homie Sean. And I start like like questioning things almost, right? I start questioning things of the story I was told for the first time ever. I wanted to believe the story that Jerry told me. So I start questioning this in my mind and I'm like, but I'm fucked up too. I think K Wood's cousin in Ice had came over that night also. And I was just fucked up. I barely remember them niggas even being there, man. But uh they ended up leaving. They weren't there that long. They don't have much to do with the story at this time. But I just remember them being there. Okay? So they leave. I'm inside with my sister's friend and I've been smoking the dust on and off. So I might have smoked it all by now. I don't know, but I'm feeling it, okay? I'm feeling it. Okay? So all of a sudden, some gunshots go off outside, right? And this is a, you know, it's a rough neighborhood, 8th and Morgan, North Minneapolis, uh 2005, you know what I'm saying? Um so So she is like, will you come outside with me? It's my sister's friend. Is her name relevant? Do I give her a name, man? Do I give her a fucking name? I feel like no, but I'm going to give her a name for you guys. I'm going to tell you her real name. Her name was Tanya. <clears throat> okay? So Tanya was like, hey, Nick, will you come outside and, uh, and uh, help me? And make, basically make sure nothing happens to me. She was scared. Women, I, I don't blame people for... And I've been through a lot of shit, you guys. I've been in, like, literally war zones. I should be, like, a lot more cautious than sometimes I am. People aren't wrong for being scared. Okay? So, um... It's not for me, but I, I understand why they are. Okay? So, I walk her outside as we get outside. Now, 
her husband had been murdered in a strange homicide where an unsolved homicide where this is where it gets weird an unsolved homicide where his friend potentially accidentally <clears throat> shot him in the stomach when he tried to stop a fight between two individuals one being his homeboy and somebody else he jumped in the middle of it being a pacifist being a cool motherfucker you guys the world needs some of these guys sometimes okay he jumps in the middle of it he jumps in the middle of it and he jumps in the middle of it and ends up accidentally getting hit i think the gun went off on accident anyway okay Guns are very dangerous once they're locked and loaded. It's like a bomb. It's like a grenade. As soon as you hit that pin, it's going off. Okay? So, slash trigger. So, so, I gotta smoke for a second. I gotta smoke some of this CBD, yo. So, the gun goes off. He gets hit in the stomach. Expires on the route to in road to the hospital. <laughs> he passes away. This is her telling me because I make the mistake of asking her while I'm all shermed out thinking about my dead homies I ask her about her loss okay oh fuck you wanna do man like what is you fucking doing man this fucking lady back there is gonna get fucking smacked oh <laughs> alright you guys She's fucking the story up man somebody slap that bitch man alright so so fucking bitch made me forget everything I was talking about, you guys. Fuck, man. Hold on. I'm with you guys. I'm with you. Shit happens. All right, so, so her husband gets hit on accident by potentially his homie and passes away on the way to the hospital, right? And the way she described it is her husband was in limbo, not understanding that he died now do i believe in this you guys i don't know i'm just fucking telling you okay it's not about what you believe in it's not about what i believe in it's about what happened these are the facts and you gotta deal with them like i gotta deal with them we're dealing with them together i've just been dealing with them longer all right so as as she tells me this, I tell her my, my pain. And I tell her about my homie, Sean. And I'm like, and I start to describe him. She stops me dead in my tracks. She said, no, Nick. He didn't really look like ice. He looked Italian. And right there, it broke me to tears because... To me, he always looked like Sylvester Stallone. He was actually Irish. He's a fucking Irishman. And probably some other shit. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, Sean Charles Patrick O'Brien. So he's a fucking Irishman, all right? But he looked Italian. So when she said that, she described him to me how I always thought him to look. So I knew she, so I broke, she broke me down to tears right there unintentionally. She said, Nick, I'm sorry, man. Like, but I gotta tell you. She was like, and this is, this gets touchy right here, y'all. This is touchy. Now, I'm going to hold off some shit because his son will see this someday. And I don't know if I really want him to know deep certain shit, man, you guys. So let me think how I do this, man. Um, Because you guys know I don't really want to hold nothing back. But she told me the whole story about Jerry was a lie. I'm going to be vague right now, okay? 
She told me Jerry fucking lied, okay? She told me, remember the badly beaten body? Now, I didn't give her no details, you guys. I went as far. The only thing I gave her, and she didn't know him in life. There's no way, okay? It's a hard story. I'm smoking this shit for my boy. And he really knows that shit. It's crazy. So, and I'm telling the story that native you know, shit, it shit needed to been told, man. I just didn't really know how to really do it. You know what I'm saying? As far as like who, how, where, and none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, this shit right here, you guys, is is was like this was a man's. This was a dying man's wish. Is what I'm. Is what I'm telling you guys. This is this is his wish. Okay. So. Or a dead man's wish, okay? So, it's heavy shit. It's as heavy as it gets, you guys. It don't get no heavier than this. The next stage is fucking up there. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is the pinnacle of intelligence right here. You just fucking pay attention, okay? So, some, some of you guys are gonna experience little pieces of this. Some of you guys might experience more. But you motherfuckers are going to see this shit Once you pay attention, it's going to happen to you Something's going to happen to you You're going to be like, oh fuck, this motherfucker's right That crazy motherfucker, crazy Nick Ain't so fucking crazy Okay Now I'm crying like a little fucking bitch, right Sobbing like a five-year-old baby She broke me down, right <sighs> Told me everything I ever wondered no, fuck that. She told me everything I needed to know, and held back other things. And, and I, you guys, you know, you know, you guys know how I know my shit, and you know how how I got my shit together. Like I had a thousand questions for her. It was like having like a fucking genie in a fucking lamp or something stupid, right? In fucking front of you, right? I had all these fucking questions, right? I had all these questions, but I didn't ask a single one because I don't fucking like psychics. My mother told me that when I was a child, she told me from a young age that psychics were demonic in a way. And it's like they're breaking a certain rule. They're, they're manipulating the construct in the simulation. Not manipulating it, I'm sorry. They're cheating. It's like a cheat code or a hack. Like they're not supposed to be telling people this shit But it had to happen So The reason I can accept it And not get like Cursed by God Almighty For taking forbidden knowledge Because I didn't ask a question I didn't ask her for this She never one time told me Nick I'm a psychic I can fucking tell you things you wouldn't fucking believe She didn't fucking say it before or after She broke me down to tears I cried like a baby She told me everything I needed to know You know what I'm saying Before my homie died He was like He was like grabbed me and he was like No he didn't grab me right away He was like Nick you better be at my motherfucking funeral dog You got more, more heart than anybody I know and he said some, what, how do he put it, man? He, he said two phrases, man. And he said, what did he say? He said, he said, you good? Nick, you better be at my funeral. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna be there. You know, I was like, sorry, you guys are cut off. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm gonna be there. And he like grabbed me by my shirt. And he was like, Nick, you got more heart than anybody I know. And what'd he say? You're the bravest motherfucker I know? And... He was like, you better fucking be at my funeral. This was like maybe... Two or three months before he died. We used to live together, you guys. Me, Jerry, and Sean knew each other like... We was the gang. You know what I'm saying? Like... We were all, we knew each other for years. Jerry and Sean were like best friends. So Jerry, this admittedly, 
helped kill his best friend. And like I told y'all, the reason the case really fell apart, she had those details also. I didn't ask her a question, remember? She gave me a certain amount of information. She told me that it took him four days to die. In that like he got beaten tortured for four days there's another detail that I don't really want to put in it you know what I'm saying because the situation man is still ongoing you know so so it's like man one of the last messages he left me with was like Nick stop being sad about this like I'm okay I'm okay you gotta live your life man we'll see each other again this was a final message we'll see each other again but it won't be for a very long time that was the end of it, you guys. I walked her back in the house. I saw her multiple more times in life. We never spoke about it again. I never asked her a question. She never said anything else about it. She never came with any more messages. She never brought it up and said, hey, you remember? Nothing. It was never spoken about except for between me and her. Now, Jerry told a story. He tried to do the best he could do after the unthinkable act of murder, of being an accomplice and murdering your best friend that you didn't really want to. You just ended up in this situation with somebody that was just super manipulative and crazy as a motherfucker. People are dangerous, you guys pay attention. Pay attention. Some people you need to just throw people. Some people are dangerous as fuck. You need to you need to get them right out the gate before. Man, you gotta pay attention, y'all. Like, don't let nobody fucking be no sleeper and be the one that the motherfucker that you choose to befriend is really the person that takes your life. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck you guys. It's it's always it's never your enemy that gets you. They didn't know each other very long, but still it was a friend. It started as a friendship, but really that shit was like a whole satanic fucking orchestrated thing that was probably ordained way before. I don't know when, man, but fucking probably 40 days into the womb, they say sometimes, bro, where they say the Muslims say 40 days into the womb, your whole God has planned your whole life out for you. You know, and certain things that happen are already gonna happen. It's just time has to, time has to catch up to these events. You know, sometimes time will overlap itself. It never stops though, you guys, but sometimes there's like this, some type I feel flaw in there, in this technology of, you know what I'm saying? Like that, um, Time overlaps itself. That's when you experience deja vu. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's just for a split second where you're like, damn, I've been here before. I've seen this. I've had this conversation. You said the same fucking thing. The clock was right there. That was right there. That's just time overlapping itself, you guys. It's flawed technology. Nothing, no technology's ever been 100% perfect. That's why they say we're imperfect as human beings. You guys, they've told us that from the jump. That the technology is not perfect. We are fuck ups. And the construct is fucked up also. I know this shit sounds fucking wild, man, but do your own research. Okay? That's where that story ends. It doesn't need to go any further. Um. <clears throat> 
I didn't leave anything out that I couldn't, you know what I'm saying? Um, I've kind of put myself in a scenario where I've just disclosed information that only killers would know, but I know that I was nowhere in the area of Bemidji. That was my homie, like that's my brother. Anybody, any, there's never been, like I'll challenge any, any investigator to try to question me about